Hey, good afternoon, good morning, or even possibly good evening. My name is Dale McKay. I'm a senior technical marketing architect here at VMware, and I'm joined today by Eric Huber, who is a senior technical product marketing or product manager. We're here today to take you through the Carbon Black Cloud Workload 1.1 release, which was recently released. Eric has some slides that we're going to go through. So go ahead, Eric. Hey, everyone. Really happy to be here and talking to you today about our Cloud Workload 1.1 release. We've made some pretty nice enhancements in this release. Uh, three of them we're going to talk about today. We'll go through the enhanced proxy support, a simplified registration page, and we'll do an NSX tagging video in a separate presentation. So be sure to follow that one uh, following this. Next slide. So to kick off, we'll talk about the enhanced proxy support. <clears throat> Proxies aren't anything new to Carbon Black. Our sensor has supported a proxy config for a long time, well, at least a few years. And our appliance supported proxy configs as of the 102 release. But the enhancements that we've made here really enhance the lifecycle management portion of our workload product, which is a huge selling point of that product in general. So what we've done is we have allowed the Carbon Black launcher that's embedded into VMware tools, which is responsible for installing the Carbon Black sensor on virtual machines via the plugin to communicate via a proxy now. So if your virtual machines are configured with a proxy already, that launcher will honor the proxy download the sensor and install it. And the sensor will inherit the proxy config and do all this in the background without you knowing. And that sensor will continue to communicate with the Carbon Black Cloud through the proxy server that's been defined on that virtual machine. This is the enhancement. Again, the sensor has had proxy support, but now we bring that end-to-end -end lifecycle management for the sensor. As long as you're using an HTTP proxy on that virtual machine, the lifecycle management feature, as you know it, will work flawlessly. The other enhancement, if you go to the next slide, is on the appliance. So now we have the ability to use authenticated proxies in our appliance. In our initial proc release, sorry, in our initial release of the 102 appliance, we allowed for proxy communication, but it did not have the authentication piece. So we allowed HTTP, now HTTPS, SOX4, and SOX5 using usernames and passwords. So really honing in on the security features there of this appliance. I'm gonna turn it over to Dale now to go over some of the other enhancements that we've made in this release. Hey, thanks very much, Eric. One of the additional enhancements that we are providing in the 1.1 release is when, when you went to register the appliance uh, with Carbon Black Cloud and you went through that process, you had to go and collect your Carbon Black Cloud URL uh, along with your org ID and a few other pieces of information. And sometimes finding that URL wasn't uh, particularly that simple, particularly if you didn't have access to Carbon Black Cloud. If you're one of those vSphere admins that's really just kind of working in that vSphere uh, environment. So what we've done is we've made a drop down uh, box or drop down menu where you can actually go and select the appropriate Carbon Black Cloud production environment that you're going to associate this particular appliance to. I think it's just one more step in taking out uh, possible um, mistypes or bad cut and paste and really just kind of simplifies that registration process. The next thing that we've done is we've added some granularity to the upgrade scheduling. You can see on the top, this is from a 1.02 appliance where I could select a day and an hour. And you can see that down below, now I can select days, hours, and minutes in terms of upgrading. Now, that may not uh, seem like a lot unless you have a lot of appliances in your particular environment and you want to kind of cycle through that whole upgrade process. So, those are some of the uh, features and really enhancements that we're providing in the 1.1 release. The thing that I want everybody to keep in mind is we're talking 
through this NSX tagging is the fact that this is really the first step to integration between NSX and Carbon Black. And once we get into this and you see the integration that this release provides, it really opens the door to much more elaborate, much more complex integrations that you're going to see in the future as we really start down that path to an XDR solution. So let's take a look at how we begin this process and where the process begins is when we're in the appliance and we're registering the appliance, we have registered to V center. We have uh, registered to the carbon black cloud. There's also going to be a registration capability for uh, NSX. And if I go and I select that drop down box, what should be displayed is the NSX manager that's configured for the V center that this appliance is attached to. Now, when you set up NSX, you have the ability to connect it to compute managers, i.e. V centers. And the V center that the, this appliance is going to be connected to would then make that NSX manager available for registration. Once I put in my credentials and I get successful registration with the NSX manager, as part of that registration process, there are three NSX groups that get created. And you see those right there. There's a custom group, an isolate group, and a quarantine group. Now, we're going to use these groups in some NSX distributed firewall policies that we're going to create. We're also going to create a context profile. And within this context profile will be the fully qualified domain name that we're going to allow potentially uh, quarantine devices to access. That's the purpose behind this context profile. And I mentioned that we were going to create some distributed firewall policies. Well, here they are. There's three policies that we create. There's an isolate policy, a quarantine policy, and a custom policy. Now, what we do is we take those three groups that we created and we use those in the applied to field for these policies to define exactly which entities these policies should be applied to, meaning that particular group. And you can see in some cases we allow some traffic and in some cases we allow no traffic. Now, I just want to make one note about this custom policy. That is really intended to be a customizable policy for advanced administrators who want to add some additional actions based on um, rules or uh, situations that may be pertinent to that particular environment. So now Eric's going to take us through what you would see from a carbon black cloud perspective as we walk through this NSX integration process. Eric? Yeah, thanks, Dale. So what Dale really walked you all through was the configuration of this integration. And as he mentioned, this is our first step in integration with NSX a better together story, and there's gonna be a lot more to come. But we're really excited about this. And he showed you how the appliance is used to register to NSX, all of the things that are configured there. And now I'm gonna take, take you through how someone would utilize this feature. So first things first, when you complete that registration that Dale showed you first, in your Carbon Black Cloud, you should see an NSX connectivity equals true. And that means that you've successfully registered with NSX and you can now use NSX for remediation. So next slide. To remediate or to take an action with the Carbon Black Cloud using NSX, it's as simple as selecting a workload or selecting the alert fired from a workload and applying the NSX tag. So you can see here we can apply an NSX tag or remove an NSX tag. So if you click on apply NSX tag, next slide, you're presented with those three options, right? The quarantine, isolate, and custom. You would just click here, click apply, and that virtual machine is now quarantined per those policies that they went over, isolated, or whatever you made your custom policy do is what would happen to that virtual machine. And it's as simple as that. This is gonna be an 
awesome feature for our CBC admins, our security admins who now want a more software defined and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Complete quarantine functionality for virtual machines using VMware products. So we're really excited about this. Thank you for your time. Back to you, Dale. Yes, thanks a lot, Eric. And I also am pretty excited about this. I think the integration work that we've done is just the beginning step to having a, a very tightly integrated NDR and EDR capability that, as we know, finally leads us to that XDR panacea that we're all reaching for. All right. And I want to thank everybody for your time. I hope this uh, video has been useful. As always, you can find this video and other technical enablement at carbonblack.vmware.com. And thank you for your time.